The amount of energy generated by a nuclear explosion is enormous. Near the crater area, there is almost total destruction from blast and heat. Now, large amounts of pulverized debris and molten earth are pulled up into the mushroom cloud. This is where radioactive fallout is formed. Hi everyone, Ron from Fallout Hobbies here. I know it's been a little while since I've done a video, but if you've been keeping up with the Facebook page, you'll see that uh, I had to move the entire office and reset up the business due to a personal matter. But I'm back in a new studio. I've got a new setup going on for the videos. And I'm going to do this style from now on, where it's kind of like straight from my face perspective. Maybe it'll be a little bit more interactive. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, I'm working on a new demo model for the store. And it is a custom uh, Storm Talon that I've designed for the Carcharodons chapter, a.k.a. Space Sharks. I'm going to be using a couple different products on this. Well, first off, let's talk about I've scratch-built some wings, a new canopy, this missile launcher that looks like a hammerhead shark, and I'm also going to be adding a, a pair of like little, you know, aft lower aft fins there too but I haven't created those yet I'm gonna be using two of my six LED kits because I'm gonna add lights in the cockpit I'm gonna add little sensor lights all along the front rim of this missile launcher there's going to be lights coming out of vents that I've cut out in the side and back tailpipes and vents that I've cut out here there's also gonna be lights uh, behind the Space Marine, lights coming up through the Space Marine's eye, and I'm going to be using one of my medium jet engine exhaust kits to create like a really cool jet engine trail shooting out the back here. I'm going to be using the Dragon Scales 2 airbrush stencil to create a very subtle gray on gray uh, fish scale kind of effect, even though I know sharks don't have scales. I know, but it'll look cool, and it's going to be a subtle effect. And I'm going to create a uh, custom decal sheet with the Carcharodon's chapter iconography and some, uh, you know, Maori tribal patterns that I'll put probably in like the corner of the hammerhead area and maybe, maybe one back here. All right, so let's get started. A couple interesting things to talk about. First off, I'm going to briefly glance over this custom canopy that I made. Um, one of the main reasons I made a custom canopy was this vehicle was made all out of bits. I didn't really feel like spending $60 for a Dark Angels Dark Talon model just to use, you know, 10 pieces of it. So I bought it on bits, but Space Marine canopies, they're like gold. I don't know. I can't find them in any bit store. So I just made my own. Um, I used a piece of thin cardstock and just kind of aligned the cardstock on here and just kept slicing it off until I got, you know, a shape that I liked. Once I did that, I was able to cut out the, sty the corresponding styrene shapes for the inside here. And then I just mirrored the image for over here. And then this is a rectangle, and then this is just kind of an odd oblong shape. Really wasn't that hard to put together. I have tutorials on my blog, Eye of Error, that show how to, uh, you know, cut complex styrene shapes like this. And of course, now there's jackhammering outside my house. Well, hopefully you guys don't hear that jackhammering too much, because I need to keep filming this. All right, well, the uh, jackhammering has subsided for a while, so I guess back to the video, right? <laughs> so anyway, moving on, let's talk about some of the detail areas here. So this is 
a custom piece. I wanted it to look like that the missile launcher that was on the Storm Talon looked like a hammerhead shark head. So I took um, some missile launcher bits that I bought off of eBay. I think these were from uh, Imperial Guard vehicle. And then I made this, uh, you know, custom frame out of sheet styrene. There's some details in the back, some grills. And I've installed one red LED here and some fiber optics. I did not install the fiber optics on this side because I'm going to show you how I do that. But check it out so far. It's pretty cool. Let's just attach the perfect opportunity to talk about light blocking because it is not blocked enough let me turn off one of there we go so the red leds in here plastics translucent this gray plastic's a little bit more opaque but you still might want to light block from time to time you can see where the led light is bleeding through the top here i have not painted the inside of this yet to block the light but i have painted the inside of this even though it looks white it's actually sprayed with a coat of blood i taped it off first off and then i sprayed it with a coat of black primer and then a coat of white primer this is the bottom and you can see why well, i taped it off and did the same thing here because i don't want light bleeding through this area when the model is assembled uh, there's a little spot i have to fix but Overall, not too bad. See the difference between the light blocked area and the non light blocked area? So if I seal that up, yeah, not too bad. Just a little bit of a bleed along the seam. I've also cut these vents out here because I wanted it to look cool, you know, like some red vents coming through. So that's, that's pretty dope. All right. So installing fiber optics is uh, pretty easy for the most part. You need a drill, a power drill, and this, uh, this drill bit comes with our LED kits. Uh, so it's an exact match to the width of the fiber optic cable, which is right here. So I've already pre-drilled the holes in here. You know how drills work. Simple way to do this. This fiber optic is a polymer, so you can bend it a little bit through the hole. I'm curving it so that it goes towards the light. I'll turn this light off again. Drop a super glue. Dash of zip kicker to lock it in place. And then snip installed fiber optic all the way through it. Now you can you can go crazy with this. I've done starship models that have had literally hundreds of little fiber optic windows all through it. It's it's a lot of fun. I'm gonna install the next one while I'm at it. Same thing, little piece of fiber optic cable. You get three feet of cable with each LED kit, so that's a lot when you're only using a couple inches at a time really starts to go the distance. Oh, something's jammed up in this one. Okay. Well, guess I have to drill it. But this I should open it up. It knows my fears. It knows my secrets. It gets inside your head. It shows you. Bend it a little bit. Got 
For real? No. This is a whole part of the video I might edit out. What is jamming up in here? Maybe I won't edit this out because this is troubleshooting, right? yet because I still might be making some changes and I still need to paint the inside there to light block it all right there we go sometimes when you drill out the holes for the fiber optic cables little little bits of plastic like to uh, remain inside the hole and then it can very easily block the fiber from going through and snip there we go cool so i'm going to be doing that uh probably a little bit on the side sensors as well and i'm going to be doing that also on some of the bigger buttons inside the cockpit because that's just going to be cool all right, moving on. One of the other areas that I did was I wanted to light up the Space Marine himself. So I took the Space Marine pilot figure and I drilled a big hole through here all the way out to the head. This is a replacement head because I wanted it to look like Mark IV because the Carcharodons have a lot of Mark IV armor. Um, there are some gaps in the neck that I need to fix in order to light block it. I drilled these big almond shaped gouges out of the back because when I put the light in I wanted to like splash out onto the back seat so that in the pilot seat it looks like his eyes are red and then there's like this wall of like red blood around him like he's a shark in the middle of a feeding frenzy. I think it would look pretty cool. So anyway. LED in him, as you can see, it splashes out the back a bit. There's definitely some leakage around the neck that I need to fix, for sure, but pretty cool effect though. Otherwise, let me show you what I'm talking about when he's in the cockpit. I already drilled a hole out of the cockpit seat. There's a little light leakage around his crotch that you could see in that picture right there. So I need to fix his crotch leaks and his neck leaks. But other than that, it looks pretty cool. All right. One of the other things that I did using this tiny drill bit was I drilled, sorry, just hit the camera, was I drilled holes through these areas because I wanted I wanted light to come through. It's very tricky. I'm not going to do it on camera because it takes a lot of control and I also like to stick my face about an inch away from the model when I do it. But the premise is you just hold your hand really steady and you go like this and then through. This and through. This and through. If you do it real quick and with a steady hand then you only need to do minimal cleanup with an exacto knife when you're done, just cleaning out the edges and the little burrs that remain of plastic. But it'll look pretty cool when it's done. I've also repeated that process on these little side vents and on vents in the tail area. I wanted it to look 
like this whole vehicle was a shark and that all the vents here were almost like gills and when you look inside the gill of a fish it's sometimes a pinkish color so i was thinking kind of like a like a bloody gill like the vehicle was almost breathing as it was flying so you'll have like the vents underneath here the vents here the vents here and the vents here that are all glowing so that'll be pretty cool all right so moving on another area that's going to get attention is the jets that are on the underside of the vehicle now this is super easy to drill these holes out i've already installed leds on one half boom that's great looking but i haven't installed any on this half super easy to do you're going to need a bigger drill bit for this something that you buy at a hardware store i'm also using a hand drill because it's a lower um you need a low rpm when you're doing some of the drilling because a high rpm with the sheet styrene with the styrene that these models are made out of and the sheet styrene that i use here a high rpm can create an excessive amount of friction and actually melt the pieces now if you're a novice, I would not suggest using power tools. I've been doing this stuff for a while and have a relatively steady hand, so I make minimal mistakes anymore. I still make mistakes from time to time. I screwed up one of these tail fins here that I got to fix. But, you know, I, I, it's, it's your call, whatever you're more comfortable with. I like using these like heavy-duty ones when I'm doing bigger light installs. So here, there's a ready... A hole in this plastic piece that's pretty much the exact width of the LED. Take that fuzz off. I just didn't want to go through, did it? There's one. Right. So in the back, you just got some of these little nasty bits. Yeah, to get rid of. I just like to use a sharp blade and just kind of gouge that out there. Very attractive orifices there. Perfect for lights. Is this a white one? I'm not sure. I have a bunch of LEDs here. Oh, red. LED. You just perfect install, put a little bit of super glue, and boom. That's it. Just a little dab of glue in there, and you're done. last things we're going to discuss in this lighting session is the jet exhaust. Now this piece is going to go on here. Now these are the jet engine pieces from Fallout Hobby's medium jet exhaust kit. You get to pick the color LED you want and it comes with two LEDs, two jet exhausts, and a nine volt battery clip and a switch. I have installed blue in here, which I think looks pretty cool. So 
So this is basically what it'll look like when it's shooting out the jet. As if it's like a streamer of blue of blue exhaust. I know it's not accurate scientifically accurate but it looks pretty freaking cool all right everyone after a little break i am in the process of doing some wiring look at this cluster jesus that's ridiculous but that's because there's four lights down here two red ones up here two blue ones here red red this is a red for the pilot and these are the cords that'll be going out to the nine volt battery. Right. I'm gonna do some soldering. Oh yeah, that's good. Now again, if you're doing just some light electronics work and you're not creating a ridiculous cluster of LEDs like I am, you probably don't need to solder at all, but I'm going a little crazy here, so just bear with me. All right, I just got some nice globs of solder on there. Get a little flux on here. There you go. I'm just getting a little flux on the wires. It'll help uh, transmit the solder across the connection. Help distribute the solder rather is what I'm trying to say. There we go. Now I'm gonna be doing it on this side. Now what I'm going to be doing is Ow. Oh, that got stuck in the skin. Okay. So these two cords here are the cords that are running to the battery line. So I need to kind of get this model out of here before I accidentally stick a soldering iron into it. There we go. Gotta heat that up. And try to get those puppies to stick together. Oh, it's getting hot. There we go. All right. Now, if I did that right, then this should all light up. I hope I did it right. Okay, good. Well, that works. Whew. That's a lot of lights. That's beautiful. I'm gonna let this run for a few minutes because I want to make sure that, I just wanna make sure it works, you know? I like to double check these things. I wanna make sure it doesn't get too hot. Make sure I didn't accidentally cross or subtly cross a wire somewhere. So I'm just gonna let it run for a good, you know, 10 minutes or so and just see how it works. 
This is smoking hot, by the way. Don't touch that. One of the next things I'm going to do is continue. Let me get this out of the way before I scorch my hand. Stay over there. Stay there. Okay. One of the next things I want to do is I have this pilot who, when I stick this red light in his butt, as you can see, light comes out of him. But he's got holes in it that are leaking light around his neck. So there's this awesome stuff you can get. It's called liquid tape. You can get it at Home Depot. This is a crusty bottle, sure. But it's black liquid rubber. And it's really awesome for light blocking as well as uh, sealing up these connections so that they don't interfere with each other. So after I'm done testing this out for like 10 minutes to make sure it's fine, see, nominal, yeah. LEDs produce almost no heat. They produce a really, really tiny amount of heat, but it's not even enough to like soften the plastic or anything. So you don't have to worry about that. And this uh, PLA, that, that we print these out of is really durable, so you don't have to worry about that being warped. Yeah, I think that'll work fine. That's gonna look so wicked. Yeah, I'm gonna have to smash those cords to get it all to fit together. That's fine. Okay, so back to this at hand. I'm gonna take some of this liquid rubber. Mm. I need a smaller, I need like a like a pick or something. You see, I'll put some of this in here and then I'll wipe it off. Just kind of smashing this in here. I'm gonna wipe the excess off. Just kind of globbing it under there. Okay, it's all globbed around the neck. Let's see if it works. Pretty good, pretty good. Just got rid of a lot of that light leakage around the neck. All right, let me get a paper towel and wipe off the excess on that. Don't put the paper towel on the hot soldering iron. That's a good lesson. There we go. See, still a little bit back there. I'm gonna get that in a moment. And some of this is shining through the plastic. That's not an actual hole. That's shining through the plastic and that will be taken care of when um, I spray the black primer on it in a minute. Well, in a couple minutes after this stuff dries. This liquid plastic, does, this liquid rubber, I mean, does dry pretty quick. I should be able to spray this in about 15, 20 minutes. Cool. All right, I think I'm confident that this circuit's gonna work without shorting out. So I'm gonna use the same stuff here just put some big old globs right on these wiring cluster clusters now I do want to mention that I am NOT a professional at electronics not n by, by no means I like it as a hobbyist but I am NOT trained in any way in electronics and part of the reason I made these hobby these lighting kits was because I think LEDs are really cool. I love lighting models with them, but there is a pretty big learning curve to to get in eh, to get in them. And 
I design my kits so that people can get in them without having to make as much of a learning curve as I did. <clears throat> I'm also going to be light masking the inside here because I don't want, I want red light inside the canopy to glow through the vents that I cut out here. I don't want this white light to interfere. So I'm going to be putting some pretty big globs of this liquid rubber on there. Maybe I should just use the paintbrush end on that one. up cool all right ew stuff slimy feels pretty gross all right here we go so just to uh, remind people what's what this LED is for the pilot this LED is for the channels that have been cut out in the tail fin. These red LEDs will shine up onto the holes here. Jet engines, and this is for the front hammerhead missile launcher part. So check this out, this is really cool. It's something I've been experimenting with for a little bit. I had a small stock of five millimeter UV LEDs I've been playing around with, and I'm convinced that they're pretty freaking cool. So now I'm gonna get a stock of smaller three millimeter LEDs that are miniature black lights, miniature UV. This is fluorescent orange uh, acrylic paint, Vallejo. So I've taken, I've just tested this out just on the raw plastic, just some fluorescent orange in a couple of the control panel areas. Look at this, this is so cool. Look at that. How cool is that? That's so wicked. So what I'm gonna end up doing is installing this LED like up underneath of here to shine down on all the control panels. Cause we're about to paint soon. This piece is attached now. The fiber optics are working, looks pretty cool. So I wanna talk about masking real quick. These lights are actually masked. The the LED is shining through the masking tape right now. You can see that this one's much brighter than this one because there's tape over here. I've also masked off the vents in here. These little white spots are, I primed this then I realized in order to match the detail that was on the pre-existing model around the wings, there was uh, little rivet holes drilled in there. So I used the same exact drill that came with the LED kit and just popped off a couple rivet holes on the major areas here. Now, quick talk about masking. When you're doing engines like this, 
and you want to mask the LED off at, uh, before you paint it, it can be a little bit of a pain sometimes to cut like a perfect circle. So what I do is I take a piece of blue tape and I st stick it on top of a piece of blue tape and then I stick it on top of a piece of blue tape. So I have a nice three blue tape stack. I take a regular hole puncher. This one's really old. It's my baby. Punch it. There's a circular mask. Pop it right into that canal and align it. There we go. Now there's a mask over top of the LED in there. So I can freely spray this bottom area without having to worry about any more masking. There's tape here and here. Now these fiber optic strands, I should have mentioned this before, but I actually cut the strands like about a millimeter or two away from the model so that I can paint the model and then go back in and snip fresh ends off the strand to reveal the light again. So it's a little less masking. All right, so now that all the priming is done, time to get onto a little bit of painting. I like to work within a key. So up here, these are all the these are all the colors that are going to be used on the model in varying shades and progressions. I have black surface primer just in case I need to touch up anything. I did spray this with army painter surface primer because I just love the durability but if I need to do any touch-ups or if there's any like crevices I'll just hit it with the airbrush primer it'll be fine the base color here the darkest color on the model aside from the black the next one up will be dark sea gray that'll be kind of the base shadow gray color you'll see it in areas like along the edge of the wings. I'm going to lighten it up then by mixing dark sea gray with a little light gray to create a fade up. And then I'll probably be using pure light gray as a slight um, shading type of effect when I put the airbrush stencils over top of it, which I think will look pretty cool. The underside of the model the main part and the belly area and the underwing area. I'm going to do much like when you see a shark that has a dark gray top and then a white underbelly, which you also see white underbellies on planes a lot because as the planes flying against the skyline, uh, a, a light lower surface makes it a harder target to hit. So the underbelly is going to be primarily wolf gray, which this is pretty much space wolves gray. And then there's also going to be a very light, subtle dragon scale pattern down here as well. And I'm oh, sorry, hit the camera on that one. And I'm going to be using wolf gray mixed with a little surface primer gray, which is a hair lighter. And I think that one hair lighter will be enough to create the difference. That rumbling sounds my air compressor. It's loading up right now. All right, so let's start. I'm gonna start with the dark sea gray. So this is where my nice black drop is gonna start getting really jacked up. That's for a good cause.
<clears throat> now, even though I'm going to be painting the underwings eventually a lighter gray, it doesn't hurt to spray a dark sea gray onto here to create an even smoother gradation between the various gray colors. sure that the top of the missile launcher part is also included on it. There's a little undercutting. There we go. Something just flew off. Canopy real quick. Okay. That's good. That looks good. Oh, sorry, hit the camera again. I got this camera rig right in front of my shoulders, and if I get a little overzealous, I smash it. All right, here we go. Now, I'm spraying about three quarters of the model. I'm not spraying the very back end, because we're gonna be putting one more gradation here and then the stencil color. So there's actually gonna be four shades of gray on top of it. Now granted, there's more elaborate ways to do shading than this, but this is just how I do it. Using the same two colors, dark sea gray, light gray. This final highlight is going to be two thirds light gray and one third dark gray. And then the final 
final highlight, which will have the dragon scale pattern in it, will be just pure, pure light gray. All right, here we go. So now the last shade I painted up to about this point on the wing. So this one I'm painting up to about here. So it's just a very, very front light. And of course, the underside. I'm going to be lighting that up soon. Zealous with my model handling and ended up shipping the paint. I'll either touch that up by hand or just spray it again. Now, I want the canopy to be just a hair lighter than the rest of the body, so I'm spraying this with pure light gray. But just in the front, I'm still leaving the shading in the back of it. <clears throat> and while I have the pure light gray in the airbrush, I might as well hit the other I will be taping off this area along the side of the ship and the wings before I spray the light gray under there because I don't want to damage the paint on the upper areas. But I do want to show you a cool highlighting trick real quick. Sorry, hit the camera again. I'm trying not to do that. Follow the vehicle's natural curves as best you can. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. Get that to a really small. Small and controlled movements. Yeah, that's pretty sharp. I'm going to repeat that same technique on a few other panels around here. There we go. All right, so check this out. Creates a pretty cool effect. 
Let me take the tape off. A nice highlighted effect. The stencils. Time to do the stencils. I love stenciling. All right, here we go. Oh, that's blown out on the camera. Dragon Scales 2 stencil. Dragon Scales 2. I'm gonna use the medium pattern for the tops of the wings. As you can see, some of them don't peel away. Quick trick. Put on the back of the paper, lightly dab it, even pressure. There we go. Yeah, I got most of them. Pretty much perfectly straight there. Let's smash it into the curves a little bit. Is that 90 degrees? No, that needs a slight repositioning. Now I use this little fin that's poking up through the one scale as kind of like a, an alignment peg to help uh, get the pattern even. That way it'll be symmetrical from wing to wing. All right, I'm gonna be using the pure light gray again. Now, just making sure this is nice and adhered. Don't go heavy on this. Go light. There we go. Now, for a highlight, going to use, I'm going to put just a couple drops of Wolf Grey mixed in with what's, uh, mixed in with what's already in there. Just to create a very quick highlight color that I'm only going to run along the edge right there. Do it slow. Don't yank it off. Oh, sickness. Well, that's certainly satisfying. All right. All right, I'm back. I'm gonna be doing the same thing to the other side. Damn, I keep hitting that, that boom. All right, pure light gray. Just two drops of wolf gray in there, just enough to create a highlight.
Here we go. Let's see it. both sides moving on now I'm going to do the wings right here but here's the issue I don't want dragon scale patterns on here so I'm gonna take that off I'm gonna pause the camera while I do that all right So I've masked off the strut and I've wrapped the stencil around both ways. And again, the wolf gray highlight. Just on the front. Ooh, that's a little bright. That's all right. I can tone that back. Yeah, that ended up being a little brighter than I wanted it to. Quick fix though. I'm gonna mix up just a dash of the previous color. One other thing, which was the dark sea gray. Windows found some shredded. Mixed with the light gray. The name tag was missing. It could be anybody's. It's kind of like a repair color. Trust me, right now. Just light, light sprays. There we go. That tones it down significantly. See, no big, no big at all. You want to add it? Soften that up a little bit. There we go. Yeah, that's looking good. This is a little wet right here. I'm gonna let this dry for a second. Uh, well, a couple minutes, probably about five minutes before I apply the stencil over top of here because I don't want to smear any of that. All right, coming back at you. Here we go. Just a little light gray. See, this is interesting. This piece is really long, and it's actually longer than the stencil goes. So I'm gonna have to kind of like marry the seams there. Not the end of the world. bit more subtle with the highlight this time so I don't have to knock it back again. See what happens. Oh, still a little, a little heavy. That's right, I'll do the repair color. All right, let's peel this tape off. Check out how these seams ended up doing. Oh 
yeah. That's a nice transition from stencil to solid. There we go. That looks good. So one thing that I'm going to do, oh, right, I need to stencil one last section. That's just I wanted to put just a splash over top of here. Very quick splash. There we go. Subtle. I just wanted a little subtle pattern right there. All right, looking good, looking good. I think I can probably safely put the first coat of clear on this. Almost forgot about the pilot. I'm just spraying down not this way it creates like a hard shadow along the edge of the body that's good enough honestly the rest I can do by hand a couple little highlights decal on the shoulder pad that's all that guy really needs hi everyone so after that short break, I have now masked off the areas that I want to paint a lighter gray color, which will be basically the whole underside of the bird, uh, shark rather. And I pre-prepped the smaller dragon scales to mesh, which I'm going to put on the wings and on the bottom of the missile launcher part. But first we gotta get the color down. So here, the underside has already been lightened up from the darkest gray up to, um, well, about this point, light gray. So I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna use a little, I'm gonna use a little gray primer, kind of going over some of my own steps here, but this is a little bit the way I work, kind of haphazard, I figure things out as I go. I know, it's not the best. All right, so I've taped it off so that the uh, airbrush job that's under here is protected. Now I'm not trying to like soak the thing, you know, I'm just trying to get some nice, even coats here. Little trick, it's best to spray, if you, if you got tape here, don't spray like this because the air is gonna go up under the tape and you're gonna get bleeding no matter how tight you make that tight tape. Spray like this, spray it so that the, 
so that the paint is going past the seam of the tape and the model and not under the seam of the tape and the model. It'll, it just works better. I also want the front of the canopy to be a little lighter. There you go. That was quick. Time to finish off the stenciling portion. So the light gray, the wolf gray rather, has dried. And now I just want to do a little bit of a subtle scale effect on the fronts of the wings and the um, missile launcher piece. Not sure if I'm going to do back here. I might just leave that. I'm using just some straight white surface primer. That's not light enough. Hold on a second. There we go. I had the pressure really low on the airbrush and it wasn't pumping out enough uh, paint. Okay, let's peel that now. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Need more primer. Now, the real question is, yeah, I guess I want to do just a little bit right here. Now, here's a problem. The fin's going to get in the way. I guess I'll have to cut the stencil. 
maybe I'll just do this. Maybe I won't cut the stencil. Hold on. Now I do need to cut the stencil just one spot right here. Just so I can get it to wrap around a little easier. There we go. See that way it fits under the engine pods a little better. There we go. A little bit up the sides. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, so there it is. That's all the stenciling. Now, once I take the tape off, oh yeah. It's like Christmas. That's gonna look pretty cool.